Before we get started with talking about the program, I just want to set the foundations of who we are as an institution and as a school. And so MIT Sloan's um, School of Management, our mission is to really develop principled innovative leaders who improve the world and to generate man ideas that advance management practice. And so that's really in the heart of everything that we do and all of the activities that we engage in as a school. And you'll certainly see the part, the first part of our mission throughout our portfolio of programs. Um, it's really at the heart of how we administer our different programs offered to graduate students. And so here at Sloan, we have a portfolio of programs offered um, for a variety of different points at in careers. And so we have a couple different early career programs um, that are really geared towards students with little to no work experience prior to the program. Those are our Master's of Business Analytics and our Master of Finance degrees. And then we also have a deferred admission offering um, where students apply in their final year of undergrad or their final year of their graduate program if they started grad school immediately after their undergraduate degree. And that offers them the opportunity to matriculate into the MBA program within two to five years of admission into the deferred um, offering. And so a really unique opportunity um, as students think kind of long-term about their career in their early career. As you move along um, beyond our early career programs, we offer an MS, MS, which is our Master of Science in Management Studies, and then a couple different iterations of MBA programs. So we have our traditional two-year MBA degree. Students enter that program with about five years of experience on average. Um, in conjunction with our MBA degree, we also have a um, program called Leaders for Global Operations, um, and that is a combination between our MBA degree here at Sloan and a master's in engineering from the School of Engineering at MIT. Um, and those are um, two-year degrees that students are able to pursue. The one that we're here to talk about today is our Sloan Fellows um, MBA degree. And this is a one-year degree taught on campus, um, a very immersive experience. And students enter this program with about 15 years of experience on average. Um, we are looking for at least 10 years of experience with for folks with general management experience and kind of global perspectives um, to join this program. And then we also have one final offering within our portfolio of programs, and that's our executive MBA degree. This is the only part-time offering across our portfolio of programs, um, but again, is kind of geared towards mid-career professionals, similarly to our Sloan Fellows program. Um, and students enter that program with about 17 years on average. So these are some of the highlights of our Sloan Fellows program. And um, like I mentioned before, it is a one-year degree. It's really focused on dynamic action-oriented learning environments um, to really prepare students to be successful in a variety of industries and functions after graduation. At the end of the degree, students receive one of three degrees. So you're able to pursue an MBA degree, or if you're looking to do a thesis and um, do some research, you have the opportunity to get an MS in management or an MS in management of technology. This program is really focused on a few different kind of pillars throughout the duration of the one year, um, thinking about entrepreneurship, innovation, leadership, um, really ensuring that students have the skills to be successful in making data-driven decisions and kind of improving organizations that they're working within. Like I mentioned before, we're really looking for global perspectives in the classroom, and that certainly shows up at who is in the class. Um, we have over 40 countries represented typically in any given year, and our current class has 42 countries represented in it. So very diverse perspectives being brought in solely based on geographic locations that students are coming to us from. As a Sloan Fellow student, you have access to the broader MIT community and the resources that are there as a graduate student. So a lot to kind of tap into in your one year of the degree. This program is very flexible and customizable and we'll go into more detail on that, what that means, um, but it really allows our students to design the degree to provide the experiences and knowledge that they need to be successful wherever they wanna be after graduation. And so I would say no two students are getting the exact same Sloan Fellows MBA um, because there is so much opportunity for that personalization and customization. So for today's session, um, we're gonna dive a little deeper into the curriculum of the Sloan Fellows program, talk a bit about the community and what those aspects are, talk about the career resources and support that students have in the Sloan Fellows program, and then we'll save plenty of time to answer, answer some questions live at the end of today's session. So like I mentioned before, any questions you have throughout today, please put those in the Q&A feature and we will work through them. 
So first we're gonna talk a little bit about the curriculum of the Sloan Fellows Program. Um, students start the first semester fully immersed with their other um, classmates in the Sloan Fellows Program. You're really working on smaller teams, again, across a diverse background, um, diverse backgrounds and perspectives. So thinking about where students are coming to us from prior to the program, they're coming across industries, across functional areas, from many different geographic locations. Um, this year, about half of our class has previous advanced degrees. So thinking about previous academics that students have studied either in an undergraduate degree or an advanced degree, um, really diverse perspectives are being brought into the classroom based on each individual's ex prior experiences. And students really use their previous experiences and knowledge and expertise to really work together to solve challenges. And um, they form a close-knit community within the Sloan Fellows Program. Um, if you have the opportunity to join us in the Sloan Fellows Program, you'll quickly learn the saying, fellows, no fellow left behind. Um, and this really just showcases that our students are really there to support each other through their learning and development in the one-year program. Um, but that also goes beyond graduation and thinking about our students as they are alums. Um, Within our program, they're, like I mentioned before, really a highlight on leadership. And so there are a lot of opportunities formally to engage in leadership development and kind of think about honing your leadership skills and how you improve those to improve organizations after graduation. And so we really set those foundations um, in a few different ways. Two that I want to quickly highlight uh, is the 360 leadership assessment, which starts even before you begin the program, and then opportunities to engage in executive coaching sessions which is a really unique opportunity thinking about where our students are coming from. With about 15 years of experience, those executive coaching sessions are really valuable to kind of help them take their careers to the next level. And like I mentioned before, for those who pursue, choose to pursue one of the MS um, options, either MS in management or MS in management of technology, then there's the opportunity to do research through the thesis. So like I mentioned before, um, the Sloan Fellows program is designed to be flexible and customizable. So we're going to talk a little bit about what that flexible path looks like for students entering the program. In the spring prior to starting the program, um, we're really setting some foundations and preparing students to be successful in their transition to Sloan um, and then in their time at Sloan. So thinking about things like the classroom culture and communication, helping to identify housing and other administrative items like an I-20 process and visa process, child care, things like that we're really working through in the spring semester with our admitted students, start preparing academically for the program. This is when the leadership, sur the 360 leadership survey starts so that as you be officially begin the program, you can start um, identifying your strengths and areas for improvement and really working through what that leadership survey um, tells you. And then students have June orientation to kind of kick off the official program. Then and once they complete the June orientation, students begin formal classes. And so the summer semester is all core classes. And so you're taking those only with Sloan, other Sloan Fellows students. There are no electives during the summer semester. Um, you're really working very intensely with your teammates, um, really forming a close-knit community um, and support community as you think about um, the learning and development that will be, happen over the next year. You'll focus on things like leadership development, thinking about that 360 assessment um, and working on the executive coaching and kind of tying all of those pieces together, thinking about career development. A lot of our students might be using the Sloan Fellows program to pivot industries, functional areas, or if they're looking to go to a new geographic location. So really thinking about those pieces during the career core so that you can be successful after graduation, regardless of where you're looking to go. And again, really building that learning community within the Sloan Fellows Program. So then after um, this summer term, students start um, the typical fall and spring semesters. In the fall semester, you are starting to take some elective courses. So this is where a bit of that customization comes into play. You still have some core classes that you'll be taking with Sloan Fellows, but within the elective courses, if you think back to the portfolio of programs that we have here at Sloan, you're able to take these electives with folks across those programs. And so you might be sitting in a class working with one of our two-year MBA students, or you might be taking, for instance, like a business analytics elective and sitting next to some of our business analytics master's students. And so 
as you think about the diverse perspectives within the Sloan Fellows community, as you get into some of these other courses, that just um, continues to expand the networking connections that you have and the perspectives that are brought into the classroom. Um, and so you'll be taking those throughout the fall semester. There are very frequent interactions with senior executives and entrepreneurs through different co-curricular activities that are put on through the Sloan Fellows program. And through the elective courses, you have the opportunity to engage in action learning labs, which we'll talk a little bit about in a little more detail shortly. Um, there are more opportunities for project-based learning. And for those pursuing one of the master's, the MS degrees, they will be writing their thesis. After the fall semester here at MIT across the Institute, we have our independent activities period, which is the month of January. And there are no formal Sloan Fellows courses during this time, but there are plenty of opportunities to continue to engage with the Sloan community and the broader MIT community. One thing I wanna highlight is um, a piece of optional coursework that many of our Sloan Fellows students choose to engage in, and those are executive electives. So if you think back, to the portfolio of programs. On the far right end, we have our Sloan Fellows degrees in executive MBA with 15 years or more of experience on average. And these executive electives are open to just those populations, so our Sloan Fellows and executive MBA students and alumni of those programs. And so it's a very unique opportunity to engage very intentionally with folks who are mid-career um, professionals and hear from their experiences and take the time to really um, set some foundations um, and different um, coursework that's specifically geared to folks um, at the kind of an executive level. After IAP, um, the spring semester starts and students continue with their core classes and elective blends, again, continuing with those interactions with senior executives and um, entrepreneurs through different opportunities within the classroom and outside of the classroom, continuing to engage in action learning, should the student choose to do so, project learning, project-based learning, and continuing with the thesis. And then students graduate. So there's a lot packed into the year of the program, um, but a lot, a lot of opportunities to um, choose your own path and really customize the degree to what you need. This is just a snapshot of some of the popular electives that our students, our Sloan Fellow students do choose to pursue. Um, you'll notice that one listed here is specifically and only for our Sloan Fellow students. And so those other electives are open typically to the broader Sloan graduate student community as well. Like I mentioned before, the program is both flexible and customizable. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about how students do customize their Sloan Fellows degree. One of the ways that students do it are through one of our seven certificates, and this requires about 45 units of electives to be focused on that um, specific area of interest. This is a really valuable resource for students who might be thinking about pivoting industries or job functions. Um, this can really signify your dedication to that specific topic, um, to future employers, future co-founders if you want, if you're interested in entrepreneurial endeavors, um, future clients, um, and it really provides a deeper dive into some of these areas. You can pursue any of these electives without pursuing the certificates as well. And so again, a lot of opportunity for flexibility and customization to exactly what you need based on your previous experiences, but also where you want to be after graduation. One of the pieces I mentioned before are action learning labs, and these are really um, valuable resource, again, that help students who are looking to pivot, but also um, help students if they're looking to dive deeper into a specific topic um, to get that hands-on experience there. Students work with host organizations, both domestically and globally, solving business challenges that those organizations have identified. They work on these projects throughout the duration of a semester, and hopefully the recommendations that they provide at the end of the project have a real impact on the host organization that they're working with. Some of the action learning labs have dedicated travel components and some um, are more function functional area or industry um, focused without travel components. Um, I'll show you a, a glimpse of what some of these action learning labs look like, but it is a really great opportunity to apply the, the theories and frameworks that you learn in the classroom to a real project and having that valuable um, experience in your one year of the degree. Students also um, can really customize the degree through a variety of other ways outside of um, certificates and action learning. As you kind of think about executive electives during IEP, that's a great way to really customize it to exactly what you need. Um, thinking about 
accelerator and incubator programs for those who are interested in entrepreneurship. Um, a really valuable resource at MIT is the Martin Trust Center, which is MIT's Center for Entrepreneurship. They, the entrepreneurs and residents at the Martin Trust Center teach many of the entrepreneurship and innovation certificate courseworks, um, but they also are putting on many accelerated accelerator and incubator programs. Um, so if you're thinking about getting into entrepreneurship through the Sloan Fellows Program, there are plenty of opportunities um, for that formally through the classroom, but also um, outside of the classroom as well. So like I mentioned before, students are able to pursue um, action learning labs. This is um, a glimpse of the ones that are currently offered here at Sloan. Um, the global and regional ones are the ones that have dedicated travel components to them. And so for instance, G Lab, which is our global entrepreneurship lab, students spend the fall semester in the classroom at Sloan and then spend about three weeks on site during IAP working with their host organizations. Their host organizations are cross country. So not all students in G Lab are going to the same exact country, um, but really working very intentionally with those host organizations as you think about entrepreneurship in emerging economies. So that's a really um, cool opportunity that a lot of students take advantage of, but we have plenty of um, action learning labs if your interests lie outside of entrepreneurship as well. So a graduate business degree is not just what you're learning in the classroom. What you do outside the classroom is also very valuable in the experience that you're having and where you go after graduation. And so I want to talk a little bit about the community aspects for the Sloan Fellows students. Like I mentioned before, students are coming from very diverse backgrounds. And um, this is just a glimpse of where our current students are coming from. So as you're thinking about who you're sitting next to in the classroom, um, this brings in diverse perspectives just based on lived experiences that our students have had. Um, but like I mentioned before, there's a variety of diversity in academic experiences and industry and functional areas as well. Many of our um, Sloan Fellow students are at a point in their careers where at a point in their lives where they have might have families or significant others. And so those are very much a part of our Sloan Fellows community. And I want to just briefly touch upon that. Um, here at Sloan, we call significant others SOs. And so SOs and children and families are, are encouraged to attend as many Sloan events as possible. Um, and some of the co-curricular offerings through the Sloan Fellows Program Office are specifically geared towards families. So there's one coming up where Sloan Fellows team is putting on um, a lunch that will happen um, in around uh, the Sloan building and then um, offering students and their families the opportunity to go to the Museum of Science, which is um, right down the road from us um, to spend the afternoon there on a Sunday. So <clears throat> there are a lot of opportunities to ensure that um, while you are a student at in the Sloan Fellows Program, that there are offerings available to your SOs and children and families um, because they are part of this experience as well. Outside of um, families and um, SOs, there are a lot of ways to engage kind of very intentionally with the Sloan Fellows community, um, but there are also plenty of opportunities to engage outside of the Sloan Fellows community. And so students really take the opportunities as they think about their leadership development in the one year of the program, opportunities to really kind of hone in on their skills through things like leading maybe our sports analytics conference or our investment conference. A lot of um, clubs and organizations here at Sloan put on marquee events that are the student-led conferences. So a lot of opportunity for leadership development um, through those organizations. But then as you think about just your personal development, um, there's opportunities to engage in other competitions. Um, if you want to hone in on some other skills too that are mentioned here, or Delta V Accelerator and the MIT 100K competition, if you're interested in entrepreneurship, um, those are put on through the Martin Trust Center. So again, a really valuable resource to engage with if you're interested in entrepreneurship. There are plenty of extracurriculars outside the classroom that our students get involved in, but I want to quickly highlight that as a Sloan Fellow student, you are an MIT student. And so really engaging very intentionally with the resources available to, in the broader institute is really valuable. 
Um, there are over 500 different clubs and organizations at MIT, specifically at Sloan. We have in any given year, 70 to 80 um, student clubs and organizations. And that's, it ranges because our student interests change each year and we don't have the same students year to year. And so if there's not a, if you're interested in a club that we don't currently have, that's pretty easy to bring to the community. Um, but right now we have a variety of clubs and organizations that are focused on professional aspects, industries, um, academic aspects. We have clubs and organizations that focus on um, social interest or recreation and sports. Um, and then we also have affinity groups um, for, specific, um, for specific populations as well. So a variety of different ways to think about community outside of the Sloan Fellows Program. And again, these Sloan clubs are open to any of our Sloan um, graduate students. And so you'll have the opportunity to kind of expand your network through those. There are also plenty of opportunities for leadership development within the Sloan Fellows Program through the different community committee opportunities. Um, some that I'll highlight quickly are, um, you'll see here mentioned is the NYC module. And so this is a week where students are able to opt into it um, and they go spend the week in New York and are focused on kind of hearing from a different speaker series, engaging in very meaningful conversations. Um, and this module is really student um, led. And so the speakers that are part of the NYC module are all sourced through the student committee that is for this. Um, and so really thinking about the student needs and identifying those as a student um, and making sure that those are seen through the module. Students have the opportunity to engage in things like the Sloan Senate. So this past week, um, they actually ran all of their campaigns and voted on who they would like to represent the Sloan Fellows Program um, in the Sloan Senate. Um, thinking beyond the Sloan Fellows Program, um, there is the opportunity to engage in a variety of different committees. The Office of External Relations recently worked with the Sloan Fellows students to provide the opportunity for whichever students would like to join the um, student committee as they think about class gifts and student fundraising. So there are opportunities um, that directly impact the Sloan Fellows experience, but then there are plenty of opportunities um, beyond in the Sloan community. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about the career aspects of our Sloan Fellows program. Um, one thing that I already mentioned, um, but we'll talk about in a little more detail is the executive career coaching. Um, and this is a unique offering for our Sloan Fellows students where they're able to engage one-on-one -on -one with these executive career coaches. Um, they're able to pick one career coach that they would like to work with, um, or they could work with a variety of them. But as you think about kind of where our students are at in their careers and how to take their career to the next level and really improve the organizations that they're working in, um, this is a really valuable resource to tap into as a Sloan Fellow. Within the Career Development Office, we also offer industry advisors. And so these are alumni experts across a variety of industries that can really provide both guidance, but also industry specific advice to students. Um, I think this is a really valuable resource for students who are looking to maybe pivot industries and um, having that guidance and experience from someone who was once a Sloan student um, and now an expert in industry, I think is really helpful for a lot of our students. And again, you can work with a variety of these different um, industry advisors. You could work directly with one of them. There are a lot of different opportunities to engage with them through the Career Development Office. Outside of that, the Career Development Office has a ton of support resources to ensure that students can be successful like I showed on the flexible path, you start with career core in the summer term. And so really thinking intentionally about your career trajectory, what you want to get out of the one year of the program and um, where you want to be after graduation. And so you can work directly with the career, the Sloan Fellows career advisors in the career development office. They put on a lot of different workshops, um, panels, presentations, opportunities for networking so that you can be successful in a variety of different industries and functions as you graduate. And a lot of the resources I just talked about are um, facilitated through the Career Development Office, but I just want to quickly highlight that career is not just the Career Development Office. It's really in everything at MIT um, and specifically at Sloan. And so you'll see different opportunities to, to explore, connect, and experiment as you think about your career trajectory through your academics, through the clubs and organizations, um, through conferences and competitions, 
through the broader MIT community. Um, there is a wealth of resources as you think about how to engage very intentionally in your one year so that you can be successful after graduation. And this is just a small glimpse of some of those resources that you might tap into in your time as a Sloan Fellow. So now I wanna talk a little bit about um, the impact of MIT in general. And um, as you think about connections and networking, um, how valuable that might be within MIT. At Sloan, we have over 31,000 alumni worldwide. They put on hundreds of alumni events um, and there are over a hundred alumni clubs worldwide. And so a lot of opportunities to engage, but I wanna kind of take a step back and um, think about the impact of um, our alumni. And so there are over 30,000 active companies that are connected to current MIT students and MIT alum. Over 4.6 million jobs have been created through those active companies. Um, and if MIT were um, a country, a nation, it would rank 10th or 11th in terms of economy. And so there is such a broad impact um, that our alumni and current students have around the world. And so it's a really valuable resource for students to tap into in their time at Sloan, but also um, for the rest of their careers after graduation. So I hope at this point, um, with everything that you've learned about the Sloan Fellows Program, I hope you all are ready to apply to our Sloan Fellows Program. So I'll talk a little bit about what those application requirements are and our deadlines. Some common um, components that you'll see across most applications are things like our academic transcript. We require a resume. Um, test scores are optional, but we accept the executive assessment, the GMAT focus or 10th edition, and GRE scores. Um, and then I want to talk a, a, on a, in a little more detail about some of our components that we see some questions about. Um, the first one is the cover letter, and this is a 300 word or less cover letter where you're seeking a spot in the MIT community. Um, you should use kind of formal um, cover letter etiquette in it and um, provide a little bit of detail of the impact of your work, but also um, why you're seeking a, a spot in our Sloan Fellows program. The next piece is an organizational chart. And this is really important for our Sloan Fellows um, applicants because we're really looking for general management experience. We want students who are mid-level career professionals who have led teams, led organizations. And so this organizational chart really shows us those relationships that you have day in and day out. Who's reporting to you, who you're reporting to, Sometimes your recommender or references might show up on the cover on the um, organizational chart, and that's helpful to see those relationships, but it just provides additional detail on where those relationships are um, and how you might be leading teams. The next component is a 60 second video statement where you introduce yourself to your future classmates, with the caveat being that your future classmates won't ever see this video. You have a lot of creative freedom with this one um, to tell us whatever you would like to share with us. Um, some applicants might share more personal things, some might share professional aspects, but you are um, welcome to provide whatever information you would like to share with us. The next component is a new component and it's our video question two. This is a 60 second response to a randomly generated open-ended question. There are no right or wrong answers to these questions. No preparation is required for these questions. Um, you could anticipate kind of behavioral or interview like questions. We might ask you, what's your proudest achievement? Um, your question might be about a time that you failed and how you bounced back. Um, and so don't fret when you start these, um, but you do only have 10 seconds to prepare and 60 seconds to record the video um, question too. One thing to note is that when you open our application, this video question will not automatically appear. Once you've completed about 80% of the application, that's when it will appear. You don't have to complete it right when it appears within your application um, tabs. You do just have to complete it before you submit the application. So once you go into that question, you're able to test out your audio, test out your video, um, and you won't start recording until you check off a box saying that you're ready to record your question. So um, just know that you'll have the opportunity to kind of test out the system before you do record that. And then um, we have a couple different short answers for the Sloan Fellows application. Um, the first two are Sloan Fellows specific. And so you're going to detail your general management experience and your professional goals through those two short answer questions. And then we have an additional short answer question that's on your personal background, kind of sharing um, how the world has shaped you into who you are today. 
So those are all of our application components. Um, and they're very intentional in how much, um, how many words we're asking for, the length of the videos. Um, and so please take the time to really craft your application and make sure that all of the application components are complementary to one another and aren't necessarily repeating all of the same pieces of information about you. We really want to see who you are as a whole person. And so utilizing those materials to do so is really helpful for us. We have two application deadlines, um, and we encourage you to apply only when you feel um, you are ready. And so our first application deadline is this fall, October 1st, and then our second application deadline will be in 2025, late January. Um, so please submit your application only when you feel ready. Um, once applications are submitted, we begin reviewing them the day after the deadline. So come October 2nd, we'll start reviewing applications for round one. Um, and then we will do interviews, which are by invitation only. Um, for those who are invited to interview, you'll also be um, required to respond to two short answer questions um, at least 24 hours before your interview is scheduled for. So that's a bit about the application process. Um, I want to just quickly highlight who our Sloan Fellows students are currently. Um, our class is 103 students. 37% of our students identify as women. There are over 42 countries represented in our current class. They entered the program with 15 years of work experience on average. And again, like I mentioned before, coming from a variety of industries, the top three are financial services, technology, government, education, and nonprofit. Um, but as you'll see here, they're really coming from a variety of different industries immediately prior to the Sloan Fellows Program. So with that, um, we'll open it up for questions. Um, and my colleague, Steve, will unmute himself and um, ask questions live that have come up in our Q&A. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everybody. Hi, Maddie. I'll give you a quick second to, to take a drink, rest your voice. You. <laughs> I know you covered a lot of information. So um, in terms of the questions that we had in our chat, one that um, popped up that I wanted to start out with was there was a lot of questions regarding um, uh, work experience and what the, the average amount should or should not be and questions regarding if folks fall a little short and or higher than our average work experience, does that put them at a disadvantage for the SFMBA program? Yeah. Um, so if you think back to our portfolio of program slide, our Sloan Fellows typically have about 10 years to 25 plus of experience and certainly fall within that range. Um, one of the key kind of differentiators, if you're thinking about your experience and um, maybe considering is Sloan Fellows the right program, is a two-year MBA the right program, um, really thinking about not only the number of years of experience, but what that experience is. And so a lot of folks who are in our two-year MBA might not be having whole teams report to them. They're not managing whole teams. They more be might be more of individual contributors with up to like 10 years of experience, I would say. Um, but if you have around 10 years of experience in your leading teams or leading organizations, that's when you might be considering the Sloan Fellows program. And so we're really looking for those folks with the general management experience. That's who the program's really geared towards to help them accelerate their careers and really lead organizations after graduation. And so it's hard to say specifically for any um like a blanket statement, but really, if you have that general management experience, you can be successful in the program. At the minimum, we're typically looking for 10 years of experience, but again, that has a little flexibility. About half of our class came from P from advanced degrees, so some students might have PhD programs, and thinking about how those experiences aren't necessarily showcased in the number of years of experience that they have. Um, so each situation is individual, but definitely think about your own individual experiences. If you're leading teams and organizations, this program can be really valuable for you. If you might have 10 years of experience, but only have one or two direct reports, um, I would probably consider the two-year MBA as a better option as you think about your career trajectory. Awesome. Thanks for that info, uh, Maddie. And uh, another question that we did get in, and again, I'll give you a little bit of a break, was just talking about the specializations that we have with the SFMBA program. Um, so really to reiterate what Maddie had brought up earlier, in terms of um, our program itself, you have the choice to either earn an MBA, a master's of science in management, or a master's of science in management technology. Uh, in terms of what decision you make, that will decide um, 
uh, or determine, I should say, whether you must complete a thesis in terms of, um, of graduating or completing that program. Um, but Maddie, the next question that I wanted to um, to bring up was the, there was a lot of chat uh, regarding test scores for the application in terms of the GMAT, the GRE, as well as the um, uh, executive assessment. Mm -hmm. And could you expand on if there's one particular uh, uh, test that we prefer at MIT Sloan uh, and or any um, average um, uh, range of scores that we see? Yeah. Um, we have no preference. Um, you're welcome to submit an executive assessment score, a GMAT score, either the focus edition, which is the current iteration that GMAT is um, administering, or the previous one, which is the 10th edition, which includes the AWA score um, or a GRE score. No preference given to any of them. If you have a test score, we encourage you to submit it. Even if it's an expired test score, um, we still encourage you to submit it for our Sloan Fellows Program. I will go back to the previous slide with our class profile on it. Um, and this is our, um, showcases our score for the executive assessment range. Um, so you can certainly use this to think about what scores might be competitive in our applicant pool, but the test score is optional. And so if you have this data point to provide us, it's um, helpful for us as an admissions committee to consider, but by no means required. And you're able to provide an at-home score or an in-person score across any of those exams. Awesome. Um, would you mind explaining the disadvantages or maybe the, I shouldn't say the disadvantages, I should say the advantages of the um, the SFMBA program uh, compared to a typical part-time uh, executive MBA uh, program, even considering Sloan's EMBA program? Yeah, um, I think certainly doing a full-time immersive program really gives you the time you're dedicated dedicating one year, you're taking a step back from your career and really focused very intentionally on the learning and development that will happen in the one year, the connections that you can make. And so you can very intentionally seek out those opportunities that will help accelerate your career after graduation. And so it's a very immersive program and um, really designed to cover a lot in the one year. But as you're thinking about your career trajectory, it really allows you that time to dedicate just to learning and um, professional development. And that's a really valuable resource that can help kind of springboard your career after graduation. Keeping in track with the topic of advancing your career and really springboarding it as well. Uh, one question that had popped up a few times is just, given that the program itself is 12 months long, are there opportunities in the second half for uh, Sloan Fellows to work internships uh, or create similar exit opportunities as those to the full-time uh, MBA program and students, or is it different and limited to that of SFMBA? Yeah, um, it's very a very intense program. And so there's not a lot of opportunity to engage in something like a part-time internship outside of the classroom. Um, the program was really designed to be for students to be fully immersed in the, the program. I will note that a lot of the times while students are pursuing kind of formal internships during the Sloan Fellows program, um, action learning labs really provide a unique opportunity where you're having that real world experience um, through your coursework. And so even if they aren't pursuing an internship, you have that valuable experience that you're getting, especially for folks who are looking to pivot either, either um, industries or functional areas, the action learning labs really provide that opportunity um, to really dive deep and um, utilize those experiences as you think about your career after graduation. So um, not a lot of flexibility um, in terms of kind of pursuing internships like our second, our two-year MBA degrees do, um, but there are opportunities to think about how you're applying this in the real world and opportunities to try that out through action learning. Excellent. Um, going back to the application process itself, um, to reiterate a point that Maddie had made about new components to the application, uh, one being that there is a second video uh, question and component to the application as well. I do just wanna reiterate that for this uh, particular question, or this particular new uh, addition to the application. In terms of prep and how to best uh, understand what questions may be asked, the they are randomly generated questions that will be resembling more of behavioral-based questions that you may see 
throughout like a, an interview process or standard interview process in and of itself. Um, one thing I want to stress is there's no right or wrong answer that we're looking for with these questions. It's more of an opportunity just for us to understand how you're processing and problem solving in real time, uh, given a situation and provide a little extra context about uh, your background. So uh, in terms of that uh, component, there was another part to that question, I believe that uh, asked that this was mandatory if you could submit it after you submit your application. In order to complete the SFMB application, you would have to also complete that video component before submitting everything else. Um, so yep. Just wanted to further expand on that. Uh, but Maddie, kind of going back to you in career support, um, can we talk a little bit more about um, what support our Sloan Fellow students get in terms from the career services with uh, job opportunities, either in the United States or internationally? Yeah. Um, so the career development is very intentionally thinking about our students might fall into kind of one of three categories. They might be in terms of like pivoting. Um, they might be pivoting industries. They might be pivoting functional areas, or they might be looking to maintain the functional area and industry that they're currently working in, but change geographic locations. And so all of these things are kind of at the forefront of the, what the career development team is working on and thinking about when they're putting on different workshops and um, panels and presentations and thinking through the career core, ensuring that students know how to engage very thoughtfully in their time so that they can be successful in any of those areas that they're looking to go into. I will note too that um, the career development office has a team of um, current Sloan Fellow, Sloan Fellow students that put on speaker series. Um, they're working on those right now, but they are geared specifically towards employment. And so um, while some other speaker series might be learning like the experiences um, of specific industries and functions, the, this speaker series is specifically for folks who have jobs that are available that Sloan Fellows could pursue. And so um, there are a lot of opportunities formally through the curriculum um, and formally through the Career Development Office, um, but also opportunities that current students are getting involved in to bring more opportunities to our students. And so if you think back to like the MIT, the careers everywhere at MIT, it really is. And so the Career Development Office is the kind of that first step in setting those foundations to ensure students can be successful in their um, job searches after graduation. But there is such a wealth of resources beyond that. Um, and our current students are a valuable resource for each other as they think about it, that as well. Awesome. And shifting gears a little bit as we talk more about um, the the tuition for the SFMBA program, um, can we, one question that had popped up is, could we discuss some of the factors that go into consideration for providing scholarships to international applicants from uh, low income nations or uh, situations? Yeah. Um, so here at Sloan, across all our programs, our fellowships are merit-based. And so it's based off of everything that's submitted in your application. If an applicant is admitted to our program, we'll then consider them for those merit-based scholarships. Um, outside of that, there are resources through our Sloan Student Funding Office as students think about funding the degree. Um, if you have questions about tuition, we have our current um, tuition prices listed on the website. But um, thinking about how you're funding this, like it, it definitely is an investment um, that you're making in yourself. And so thinking about what resources are available, um, if there are loan options, um, other scholarships outside of what is offered with admission, but um, what's offered with admission are just merit-based. So we do not provide any need-based fellowships with admission. Awesome, thank you for expanding on that. Um, so I know we're slowly running out of time, but um, uh, one question that had come up uh, from a few folks is um, if there was any way that uh, you would suggest uh, coursework one could do in advance to prepare for the Sloan Fellows curriculum, mm -hmm. since they may not come from the, the more business background. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the Sloan Fellows program does not have any prerequisite coursework that students have to complete. Students come from a variety of different academic backgrounds, both undergraduate and graduate degrees that they've received. And so we understand that. 
um, within the application, we will ask you to highlight some relevant coursework, thinking about things like calculus, statistics, communications. Um, and so you'll highlight those if you've taken those courses. Again, they're not prerequisites. We just want to see kind of where your foundations are. Um, if you're interested in taking coursework, sometimes students might brush up on some of those areas that we're asking about, but there's um, no requirement to complete any coursework prior to the Sloan Fellows Program. And um, if you think back to the flexible path slide um, during the spring semester, the spring before students start the, the program, um, we think about academic prep and um, those components. And so it's built into the program as well to ensure that students um, can be successful. We also look at that in the application process, making sure that you'll be successful in the classroom, but no required courses. And so it's just, if there are any areas you're looking to brush up on, um, you're more than welcome to, and you can even highlight those in your application within our additional coursework and certificate section. You can showcase any additional um, courses that you've taken.